What's happening guys? I'm Curtis and you're watching Left Foot First. Alright guys, uh, the mission today, we're going to take those spindles that we got last week and pull them apart and clean them up so that they're a little easier to work with and then I want to measure the uh, the ball joint tapers and uh, you know how big they are so I can start shopping around for some tie rod ends that might fit in there and a ball joint for the lower control arm. Uh, that'll allow us to get started on our suspension, our front suspension design and allow us to move forward. So I'm going to grab the spindles, throw them up on the bench and show you a few interesting things that we found on them. Alright guys, we ran into two issues with these spindles, um, two major issues, one of which is the brake discs. These are the two that we got. They're different sizes. So what it looks like is the RX-8 that we pulled it off of had the sport suspension package on it from Mazda, which includes a bigger uh, brake rotor. but I'm guessing when uh, at whatever point in that, that car's life they messed up one of the brake rotors, had to replace it, didn't know which one to use and got the non-sport suspension brake rotor. So that's why one of them is a little bit smaller. Um, and because of that, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, on the brake pads, see how there's like a lip right there? That lip is because these brake caliper brackets are for the sport suspension, which has the bigger rotor. So the rotor wasn't going all the way to the edge of the pad. So it was wearing away poorly. Uh, so in order to fix that, what we're gonna do is buy all new stuff. Uh, a whole front end kit for that car off of like Rock Auto is like 250 bucks, I think. That'll give me brand new discs, brand new calipers, brand new caliper brackets, the whole nine yards, and wheel hubs. So I'm just gonna do that. It's gonna save us a lot of time. Uh, when we do that, I'm going to order the one for the non-sport suspension. That'll give us a slightly smaller rotor. It'll give us this size of rotor. Uh, but what that should do is it should pull the caliper in just slightly. And when that happens, we should gain a little bit of clearance in between the caliper and the wheel. Because if you remember last week, when we test fit them, it was like a sixteenth of an inch between the caliper and the wheel, which is a little tight for my, my comfort. So that's the plan on that, is essentially all these brake components are just going to be garbage, which sucks because we did pay for them, but, you know, live and learn. Uh, the second issue that we ran into is in trying to remove the wheel, the wheel bearing, uh, it's seized in there. So, you know, 14 years of corrosion has essentially married the upright and the wheel bearing. Uh, so to fix that, because I've got to get those wheel bearings out, we're going to run over to my dad's shop. He's got like a 12 ton press. We'll throw these in the press and we should be able to press it out. If not, maybe he's also got a cutting torch. Maybe we'll just heat them up really hot and they'll pop up. So let's load these up and head over to his shop. dad shop the press is back great right there just a the little guy but we'll pull that out we'll throw the spindles up on it 
We'll probably have to jig it up with some blocks of steel or something so that the, the wheel bearing can fall at the bottom. And we'll just uh, press on them and hope for the best. So, fingers crossed. jigs but we were, we were able to pull them out uh, we weren't able to salvage the wheel bearings they got really sticky once we pressed them out that's okay though we don't know the history on these wheel bearings anyhow you know they might have 300,000 miles on them so we're gonna throw these in the garbage but uh, the spindles look good we'll uh, we'll take them back to my shop clean all this schmeggy rust off of them and see what they look like let's go and we're back in the shed. Uh, full disclosure, it's been a couple days, but we got the wheel bearings pressed out of our uprights. Now the biggest issue we have is these are filthy and I don't want to work with them. So I took a couple days off camera because it was really boring work and shined one all up. So just took and wire brushed off all the old paint and crud and rust and everything, gave it a quick coat of paint and now, now it's easier to work with. So. The next step is going to be finding ball joints for the top and bottom. Uh, the top, I'm probably going to use a tie rod end off of like a one ton truck. Um, the bottom, I prefer to use a regular ball joint, but if I have to, I can use a tie rod. Uh, considering the weight of the car, it probably shouldn't be an issue. But I'll look into those. I got to measure up the tapers and everything and, and then do a little hunting. But that's all boring off camera work. So uh, next week, we definitely won't have parts to continue the front suspension. So we'll shift gears, you know, we might look at uh, some more at that rear end or something else. But until then, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next week. <laughs>